you're probably tired of manual time consuming work in Excel that feels like this. I can't believe how long this is taking. With our essential Excel VBA beginner techniques, you can make it feel like this. Click of a button, all done. Let's get into it. In the first video in the series, we're going to look at seven essential techniques for Excel VBA beginners. And in the second video, we're going to apply those techniques to get a task done. Excel consists of objects and properties, and your ability to manipulate objects and properties is one of the main determinants of how good you are at VBA programming. So what's an example of an object? A cell is an object, a worksheet is an object, a workbook is an object and a cell for example might have a value in that value is one of the properties of the cell so let's get into the vba editor let's start working with these objects and their properties getting into the file now you can go to the developer tab and then visual basic we've got the visual basic editor open now let's go straight to insert a module and we've got our coding window here we're going to start a new subroutine and let's just call it sub property test because we're gonna be working with some properties here and the object we're gonna work with is a cell in the spreadsheet. And let's just go for cell C3. You could go for any cell in the spreadsheet really. We're gonna change the value property of the cell. Let's do that by saying range C3. This is how we reference cell C3 in VBA. We're gonna say dot value. Now this dot connects the object to the property in this case, the object is cell C3, the property is the value, then we just say equals, then just put a number in after that. Now, the code is complete, not particularly exciting, but this should work. So make sure the cursor is in the routine, hit the play button, and I can see in the Excel window that the value has gone into the cell. So let's put a different value in. Let's try 10, I can see 10 has gone in. Let's try 100, I can see 100 has gone into the cell. So this is your first go working with a cell object, manipulating the value the value property. You are now working with objects and properties in Excel. Now to complete our task, we're gonna have to work with color, but how do we know the code for changing color? Now, Excel VBA has a super useful feature, which is the macro recorder. And the macro recorder means that we can be doing something in Excel at the same time, Excel is going to record the code for whatever we've done. We're going to try it now. It's a great way for learning Excel VBA. So back into Excel, click on the Excel window. We're going to go to the developer tab and then hit record macro. And now we're going to give the macro a name. So let's just say color underscore test, an informative name for the macro and hit OK. So now don't do anything for the time being. Excel will now record the code for whatever we do. So we've got to be deliberate about our actions now. We're just going to go to cell C5 and change the fill color of the cell. And I'm going to change it to this orange color. You can change it to whatever color you like. Then don't click on anything else. Now go back to the developer tab hit stop recording and the macro has now stopped recording. So where has that code gone? Of course, it's in the VBA editor. So I'm gonna go back to the VBA editor now. The code is not there, it's not in our first module. That's because Excel usually creates a new module when you do some recorded code. So double click on module two and we can see this is the code for the actions that we just did in Excel and we can see we selected C5 and this is the more complicated code to do that coloring. These annotations at the top, we can just clear those out for the time being. So let's just quickly manipulate this code a little bit. What would happen if we change this to cell C7? Stop the video now. What would happen in Excel if we played the code now? Let's give it a try. We can see C7 has now changed color. Uh, what if we tried, let's say a B7 here. So what's gonna happen now? Hit the play button and we can see we've got some coloring in B7 there. So what we just done there is so important recorded some code, reviewed it in the VBA editor, tweaked it, and then looked at the Excel window to see what is happening. This is how to use the macro recorder. Now, Excel consists of spreadsheets, of course, and spreadsheets consist of cells. They're like a grid. Now, our ability to control position on that grid is so important in Excel VBA. Let's get back into the VBA editor. We're gonna look at how we can reference different cells, not just select a cell, move away from a cell. We're gonna do that using the offset 
offset method. Now, offset just means move away from. So we're going to start at cell B7 and then move away by a certain number of rows, certain number of columns to select a different cell. This is the idea of what we're doing. So we're going to start with B7. I'm just going to say uh, one zero here. So we're going to go one row down and one co uh, zero columns across. So we're just going to go one row down and dot select. So you might want to stop the video. And now what is going to happen when I execute this code? So clicking in the routine, hitting the play button, and we can see now cell B8 has some shading in. So what if I wanted to shade, let's say cell C10, and again, using position control and the offset method. How would we do that? Well, C10, that's three rows down and then one column across. So I'm just gonna type that in there. And then let's see, forgotten to put the uh, comma in there. There we go, the comma is back in. I'm now gonna play this code and I can see we've got cell C10 shaded there. So this is your probably your first experience with position control using offset in Excel. Again, have the VBA editor open, the Excel window open, do some experimentation yourself, get to know this powerful position control technique. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you're enjoying this content, I just wanted to tell you I do a daily video on Facebook and Instagram under the hashtag your daily tiger. So I might see you over there. Let's get back into it. Now, all this technical stuff, all of this code is great, but if the user can't get value out of your file, if the user doesn't understand what's going on, then it doesn't mean much. So we have to make sure we're communicating with the user. A great way to do that in Excel VBA is using message boxes. Let's get back into the VBA editor. We're gonna create a new routine now, and let's just call it something like message test. Then we're gonna go ahead and type message box, MSG box, and then we're just gonna say hello. There we go. And then just hit uh, run the code and we can see we've got a message box popping up here. Now that in itself is not particularly useful, but it does show us how we can communicate with the user using message boxes. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. If you type in now, and then run the code again. Then we're gonna see that Excel knows the date and the time, your system knows the date and the time. We can flash that up in a message box. So message box is super cool for communicating uh, with the user. In the next demonstration video, we're gonna look at some more advanced applications to really deliver value for your user. Now, what on earth is a variable? Well, it's one of those weird computer programming words. People get confused by it. We're gonna think about it as a place to store information, just like a cell in the spreadsheet is a place to store information. The difference with a variable is it lives in the VBA editor, not in the spreadsheet, which means it's less visible. Let's go ahead, try to create some variables ourselves. So let's have a new routine here. Let's just say variable test. Then we're gonna go ahead and declare a variable. When you use variables, you have to declare them. And we're, I'm gonna say a, a dim and then Chris counter as integer. So Chris, Chris counter is just the name that I've given to the variable. We've got to avoid things like row and column. Excel reserves those names for itself. So I use my name in variable names to make it distinctive. And then Excel wants to know the type of variable. This is gonna be a whole number variable so we can use integer. There's other variable types that, you, that, that we cover elsewhere on the channel too. So we've got our variable declared. We can now assign a value to the variable, just as you might type a value into the cell in the spreadsheet, assign a value to the variable. But that's difficult for us to believe, isn't it? How can we kind of externalize that so that we can see that the variable is working? Well, if you just type message box, we've just covered message boxes, and then say Chris counter, which is the variable name, and then go ahead and run the code. I'm going to hit the F5 key on the Windows PC. We can see we've got a value of one. That's because one is assigned to the variable. And just to prove that, let's put a different value in the variable. Again, hit the F5 key. And now we can see a value of 10 assigned to the variable. So again, that in isolation is not particularly exciting, but now you've declared your first, first variable, you've used the variable. It's going to get much more exciting in the next application video. 
So we're working through our essential Excel VBA beginner techniques. I hope you're ready for a step up in difficulty because we're going to get into conditional statements. A conditional statements means we can set a condition. We can just say to Excel, if something is happening, then Excel will take the code one of two ways. If this thing is happening, it will go one way. If it's not happening, it's going to go another way. So let's get into the VBA editor again and build a conditional statement. So let's just say something like a conditional test. Uh, will be fine. And our conditional statement is going to tell us if there is a value in a cell or not. Nice and simple. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to say if selection dot value equals and then just two speech marks there. That means if the cell is empty, two speech marks just means empty. Then we're going to go ahead and say then else and end if. And this is the basic structure for a simple conditional statement. We've got a condition on the first line, then we've got what's going to happen if the condition is met, then down here we have what is going to happen if the condition is not met. So if the condition is met, then we want to flash up a message box and say there is nothing in this cell. And then close the speech marks there. Save the file, control S. Now I'm going to select a cell here. I know there's nothing in this cell and then just play the code. And I can see we've got the message box flashing up because the condition is met. So if I go to another cell that does have something in again, click in the code, hit the play button. We can see nothing's happening now. So is the code running? Yeah, the code is running. It's just we've got nothing typed in this area here. Nothing typed in this area here, which is what's going to happen if the condition is not met. So we can go ahead type something in here. And in this case, we want to say message box, there is something in the cell. Let's have an exclamation mark as well. Okay, control S, save the file. So we're going to play the code now. And yep, there's something in the cell. And let's go to another cell, back to B4, and see what happens. Play the code, and there is nothing in this cell. So there you go, conditional statement. Again, in isolation, not that exciting. But this technique, we're going to see a super powerful application in the next video. I hope you're feeling excited about our essential VBA beginner techniques. This one is next level. We are getting into loops. And a loop, what is it? Well, a loop just repeats a piece of code any number of times. We can specify the number of times. As such, it helps us get lots and lots and lots done in Excel. Back into the VBA editor, a new subroutine, and let's just say loop test. And then for a loop to work, well, we need somewhere to store some information to control the loop. So where do we have to store information? We can create a variable to store some information. In this case, I'm going to say Chris counter as integer. This is another whole number variable. So integer is going to work for us. Then we're going to go ahead and create the loop. And we're going to say for Chris counter equals one, two, three to begin with one to three. And then next, Chris counter. So this basic structure is going to repeat some code three times, but we don't have any code in here yet. So let's put a message box here and let's just say uh, code is running. Then I'm going to go ahead and run the code and see what happens. What are we expecting to happen? We're expecting for this message box to flash up three times and we have a little error here. That's because we've got a spelling mistake and then reset the code. F5 key, code is running first time, code is running second time, and code is running third time. So you see how we've got three message box flashing up three times. That's because we're looping through the routine. But that in itself is not super interesting. So what else might work here? Well, we can see this variable working by just substituting the name of the variable next to message box there. Control S save the file, hit the F5 key. Now we've got one. What's going to happen next? Maybe stop the video and think about this one. What's going to be in the next message box? Now we've got two. What's going to be in the third message box? Now we've got three. So we can see that variable, it increments up by one every time we go through the loop. Super cool. Let's see if we can go a step further here. Let's see if we can combine this with some some different objects and properties. And let's just say range uh, C4. And then we're going to say dot offset Chris counter zero dot select. There we go. 
So you stop the video now, and then what's going to happen when we run this code? Which line of code is going to be selected? I'm going to step into the code this time. Go to debug and step into. That's going to allow us to go through the code step by step and look at the VB editor and see what's happening. Then let's hit the F8 key. That's going to allow us to step through the code. Now keep your eye on the Excel window. We can see C5 is selected. That's because we started at C4 and then offset it, moved away from C4 by the value of the variable, which is one. So we've gone one row down, no columns across. Step through the code again, F8 key on the Windows PC. So what cell is going to be selected now? Now we can sell C cell C6 is selected. And then one more time, we can see cell C7 is now selected. So this just gives you a feel of the power of loops. We've just repeated instruction three times, but we could repeat an instruction 100, 1000, 10,000 times or more. Super powerful technique for dealing with those repetitive tasks in the application video. We're going to see how to apply loops. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it got you started with Excel VBA. Now you've got to play with these techniques. Try playing with the examples, looking at the Excel window, building your understanding that way. And then in the next video, we're going to apply these techniques to get our manual tasks done. I'd love to hear what you think of this video. Leave me a comment. I'll get back to you.